your hats off, boys. Who is it, Paul? Must be poor old Mr. Spencer. Got shot in that holdup. Hold up, really? Who? Oh. Who? like this, you know, until that sheriff of ours clamps the lid on this town. Too many drifters. Oh, me and Robbie, we, uh, we snuck up there with this handful of rocks, see? And bang, we let him fly. <laughs> oh, you should have seen that old crazy man come barreling out of that shack. Tell him how ugly he was, Maury. I'd say he's got to be seven feet high, and his face is all, all screwed up. He kind of twisted like this, you know? And then there's all this hair all over his face. How do you know about his face if he's got hair all around it like that? You can feel the ugly. Oh. Anyway, there's all these bones lying all over the place. What kind of bones? <laughs> Don't know. Ain't never seen nothing like him before. You really think he's crazy? Oh, sure, he's gotta be. You should hear him howling those rocks at the roof of that shack. I tell you, it sounded like a, like a wolf howling at the moon. Chill your blood, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway, he lives up there, all by himself on that hill, with nothing but them sick animals around. All right, <laughs> come inside, help Mr. Baker with the supplies. What is my tally, Paul? Uh, 65, Dan. Usually I don't let it get much over 50, but in your case, I... I know you're good for it, Dan. Sure a shame about old man Spencer. Real shame. Call those men? Said so those called Vigil Laggies or something like that anyway. Yeah? Well, what do they do? I don't know. Go after bad men, I guess. My pa says that the blacksmith and a lot of other folks are mad at the deputy for not going after enough bad men. Well, how many bad men are you supposed to chase if you're a deputy? Guess maybe five a week or so. Seems like you're running out of people in town to chase. Nah, there's always new ones to chase. My pa says decent people live on farms. Anybody who lives in a town is a thief or makes their living off what thieves steal. Yeah, well, I'd bet my pa sure do some chasing if it came down to that. Mine, too. I'll bet... Shh. Something must be wrong with the hawks. I, I can only hear one of them. You're gonna break your neck. might leave him behind? No, nah, probably not. Well, I don't think so, anyway. Come on, Billy, we gotta go. It's gonna get dark. Paul, kill me. 
Go ahead. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. some of the squatters that moved in here. Uh, we burned your squatter shacks. We're the new law in Springer. Ain't no deputies. Ain't no long trials. Uh, you, you four men stole food. You were watched and followed. Your guilt has been judged by us and the penalty handed down. We're the law. And this is our land. Now, we can hang you right here and leave you to show that we mean business. We choose not to this time. We choose instead to let you go. You tell the others, this is our last warning. We don't want bloodshed, but we're going to protect our homes and our families. You've had your chance. There'll be no more. Come on, come on. find some more pets to bring home for us to feed. You could spend a little more time around here helping us catch up. Yes, sir. You haven't got another pet out there you're fixing to bring home, have you? No, sir, I, I don't. All right. Ever. Oh, 
poor little thing. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. Looks like they left you all alone. For someone who can't even have you. You can't make it on your own. I, I ain't got no choice. I gotta keep you. I just gotta. I have to hide you from my pond until I think of something to do with you. He just ain't getting the job done, Dan. How many ways can I say it? Dan, you signed the petition. We thought you was with us on this thing. Now, wait a minute, folks. I signed a petition to get more help from the sheriff. I didn't put my name to any mob action. A properly formed vigilance committee. Ain't a mob. They can get out of hand. Not with the right people running it. But then. Old man Spencer's murder ain't the only thing that's been going on. There's a, a bad element been, been drifting into town ever since the mines opened. They ain't like us. They ain't decent. They're just tramps, Dan. And we owe it to the community to do something about it. Then go to the sheriff and volunteer as deputies without pay. That ain't the same. And, and, and you, you know it. You know it. There's just some things that the, the regular law can't handle. If every able-bodied man was an enforcer of the law, why, this, this rowdy element, they'd leave town. What if they didn't leave? Well, then we'd take action. Rot them out. Not necessary. Burn them out? Maybe hang them? I'm telling you, none of that will be necessary. Once this element sees that they can't do as they please in Springer, well, they'll, they'll move on. <laughs> The man stands against his neighbors. They might get to thinking he's for the other side. A man would have to be pretty stupid to think a thing like that, wouldn't he? And all my neighbors are smarter than that. Dan, join us. Look, Carson, election's only three months away, July. You can vote Sweeney out of office, put a man in there who... There ain't time! Now, Dan, are you with us on this thing or not? I'm sorry, Paul. The answer is no. if there are a lot of bad people and, and they're making it hard for the good people, well, then what's wrong if the good people get together to run them out of town if they get out of line and, and... and then the bad people won't bother them, like Mr. Carson said. What if, uh... us good fellows decide to ride down the road and burn down your friend Jeremy's place? No, the less good people. So? All us good fellows don't like them anymore. So why can't we just ride down there and burn up? Because it wouldn't be right. It would be right if we said it right. Billy, if a mob can pass judgment on one man, then they can do it to anybody they want to any time they want. That's why we have law. Not just to protect us from bad men, but from mobs of righteous men who can get out of hand. Yes, sir.
Hey, Billy. What's the matter? Say one word about my paw and I'm going to lay into you. Hey, Billy. Go on. Huh? Go on, call him out. You think your paw's a coward? No, just because he won't sign some dumb old pledge is a coward. Well, that's why you think your paw's a coward. <laughs> my paw didn't sign the thing neither. Lots of folks didn't. I thought my paw was the only one. My paw don't hold with no man cup from town and telling him how to think. The folks here that your paw didn't sign, they figured they weren't going to sign there. Hey, I got to show you something. Got me. Yeah. He fell out of the tree, I guess. He's gonna get it by a wolf. What's he gonna do now? Well, I, I was kind of wondering if I could... Oh, no. My pa said he'd skin and cook the next time I brought him home. I can't bring him home to my place. It's all this stuff going on. My pa would hit the roof. There's only one person in these parts I ever heard of that knowed about taking care of a sick critter. A crazy man. Forget it. I'm not gonna go up. You got Maury in them, said. I know, but he's supposed to know about taking care of sick critters. Yeah, well, forget it. you gonna mess around with a crazy old man, huh? <laughs> not this time, sonny, not this time. Huh. I got you. <laughs> got you good that time, huh? <laughs> He's small. Have to throw him back. <laughs> All right, you can get up now, sonny. You try to run. I'll jerk you down again. Come on, get up. Yeah. Oh, you thought you was going to rock the crazy old man, huh? Throw some rocks in my house. Scare my animals. Is that what you thought? Uh -huh. What you got there? What you got in there? Some critter? Some critter to throw in my house? A skunk, maybe, huh? Is that what you got? No, sir. It's, it's a hawk. Hawk? I don't like you. You get hold of a hook. But you done him with a rock, huh? Is that what you done? No, he he fell out of the tree. A, a, a wolf was going to get him. I think he hurt his wing. I came up here kind of hoping that you'd help me fix him. Help? 
come, come to me for help? Well, I certainly was. I'm, I'm sorry. I really am. I, I thought you was one of them roughnecks that come up here a while back. Are you all right? Yes. Well, good. Well, <laughs> my name's McGraw. You can call me Mac or Mr. McGraw, either you like. I take exception to Crayman, though, if you don't mind. <laughs> Where's Billy Baker? Ah, uh, Billy. Well, let's just take a look at this here hawk. Uh, since you got me for help, yeah. Ah, it's red tail, huh? Kind of funny, though, ain't he? You know something about hawks? Sonny, I know everything about hawks. Ah, yeah, this near don't seem to be hurt too bad. Okay, now you fetch him right along. Over here to my dad, where park. And we'll have a look at him. Come on. Come on. Just sitting right there on the table. And you're in luck, Sonny. I just let loose two owls. I was feeling uh, in here. Yeah, I saw it. I like it seems how they hang around. I said I was healing them. I didn't say there was none too smart. You can help me with something now here. Take this to bat and hold it in your hand. I'll use this sack. This to back up bag to put over our friend here. Mr. Hawk. Now, if he doesn't object, I'll put this pouch over his head until I can make him a proper hood. You see, you keep his head covered, and he's pretty calm. up in the morning, he'll find out who his real friends are. Come on. Give me the tobacco. You know you were right about his wings, but he's too bad. He'll heal up a couple of weeks and be ready to go. But he sure is a run, isn't he? <laughs> That no matter, I tell you, when you see him spread his wing and fly out over that mountain, makes fine tangle. Sir, I bet it does. ever see a peregrine? Yeah, I think I've seen pictures of them. They're sort of, sort of short and black and white. Knock funny. No, Sonny, you're thinking of, of a penguin. A peregrine's a falcon. Hmm. Son, now I know that you want to be that hawk. No, no, sir. I just, I just want to get him well, like you said. And that's what we'll do. Sure you have a nice place here. Get them all your critters? Yeah, uh, just strays and orphans that I found and need fixing up. You, uh, you ever train any animals? You mean, uh, like hawks? You know, I guess. A few. 
Ten or twelve, I guess. Ten or twelve? It's a few, all right. Yeah, that's a few. Hard to train, though. Never know when a hawk may decide to leave for good and never come back. They're funny that way. No telling when they'll decide to do it, either. How'd you know I wanted to train him? You're a boy, too. Well, you ain't a boy, and you train him. Well, a boy is a... It's a boy. <laughs> Sally, you know, it might best that we just let that hog go over when he's well. If he was still in a while, why, he'd be dead anyway. You see, he's the run of the litter. And, well, nature has a way of dealing with things like that. Now, just because you come along... Ain't I part of nature? Uh-oh. Yeah. Well, then if we're going to let him go anyway... What difference does it make if we let him go in the middle of training? If you don't want to stay, I'm going to keep him here. Won't well, be no fan when that hawk flies away. I won't have you being on the mouth now when that happens. No, sir, I'm 12. Oh, well, I didn't know you was that old. I can come up here every other day or so. What are you going to tell your folks? To him. Now, you can't lie to your folks. No, sir. They asked, you've got to tell them. They don't want to come up here with the old crazy man. You've you, 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 you got to quit them up. Oh, you ain't crazy. It well, must be because I'm going to help you clean that off. <laughs> <laughs> McGraw. You want me to bring anything next time? No, we got everything we need up here, Sonny. Everybody? That's kind of hard to say, son, depending on the man, I guess. Yeah, you know, I, I just wanted to know. Well, uh, who are we talking about? Maybe if I knew who the man is, I could just uh, tell you. No, and I just wanted to know. Thinking about going off on your own, maybe? Not me, I'm the kid. Well, when you grow up, then. Maybe. I don't know, people seem to have a, a way of messing things up. Would you think I was crazy if I went off on my own day? Forget that I was at your age when I was on my own. Didn't any parents mess things up for me? I didn't mean that you were messing things up. I know. Billy, you got to learn to control your own life. Folks can help you along, kind of point out the general direction sometimes, but nobody can really show you the way as such. Any man who says he yeah, is either after votes or money or he just plain don't know what he's talking about. Yeah.
What's the matter, old man? Parts and uh, pays the price of flour. Yeah. Might say that. I did it. Oh. I want to see the crazy man. Really? What happened? Oh, he ain't crazy at all. He's real nice, and he's going to help us chain the hawk. That's great. But luck. Jerry, you finished the world now. How did it, Billy? Did what? We signed the pledge. We had to, or Carson was going to cut our credit up. I hate to do it, Dan, but things are things are tight, real tight, and I I, I just can't extend any more credit. Like I said, I'm real sorry. Never thought I'd see the time when things were that tight with you, Paul. Well, they they are. Chances are, if I'd sign some kind of a pledge. Things might just loosen up some, huh? Now, it ain't like that. Sure, I know. Dan, this whole town is in a fight for its life. If we can't count on folks like you to, to, to stand up for her decency. Decency? It's decency that keeps me from coming over this counter. And the good Lord sent his chosen people into the new land. And he told them to subdue the land, to work hard, obey his laws, and to prosper. He told them of the terrible law of the just. A life for a life. Eye for an eye, and a hand for a hand. A stern, <laughs> yea, even a cruel code, brothers and sisters, and yet, was the word of God. There is in our community a growing lawlessness. There's been talk of a vigilance committee. Now, it is not the place of a church or a man of God to speak of political matters. Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, and to God that which is God's. again. A few times, maybe. He's not so dumb after all. You see, this is the first step. Okay. Well, what's the next step? Well, the next step is we we throw some meat out in front of him. Then he goes out after it. Then in no time at all, we'll have him chasing the lure. And then we can fly him? Well, maybe it's a good idea if uh, if we let him fly without us. You know, he he he's just run. I won't be too long, son. Why don't you run over to Monday's and see if that harness is ready? Yes, sir. What? Name's Dan Baker. My wife said you stopped by our place yesterday. You wanted to see me? I sure did, Mr. Baker. Add Sweeney. Have a seat. Sorry to bring you into town in the middle of the week like this. I'm sure you had better things to do. I do. <laughs> but the visit by the sheriff to the town of Springer is kind of rare. I didn't want to miss it. Well, I've been having such a good time in five other towns in this county, I just couldn't tear myself away from all that. Figured the killing of my deputy here in Springer required more of a personal touch. Botsford? That's right. 
Well, that old man never hurt a soul in his life. Yeah, I always figured that's a drawback in his line of work. But he was a good friend of mine. Wasn't there something you could do to stop all this before... Mr. Mr. Baker, at one time or another, I have offered to make every man in this town a deputy. But it seems to me that they're too busy hanging out down there in Carson's store or running around at night with these flower sacks over their heads. Every one of them. Except you. Well, it's my wife. She won't let me out at night. Baker, I got a county on fire here, and I got two months to put it out. I'll be voted out of office, and one of them flower sack heroes can take over. But until that time, I got to stop this thing that's happening. Now, seeing as how you and I are about as popular as the plague around. come down once in a while for supplies. What about you? But Paul's seen the sheriff. I can't come up to there. I'm real sorry. Well, how's the hawk? Well, his wing is mending. Oh, I made something for you. It's a whistle. We'll use it in training him. Oh, that's nice. It's real nice. Thank you. Now, mind you, it may not work. If that hawk decides to take off, there ain't no amount of whistling or hollering or crying that's going to make him come back. Uh, it'll work. I know it will. Don't go to uh, tooting it around the house. Your folks won't like that a bit. Your pa probably thinks we're crazy enough as it is training this hawk and all that. He sure would if he... If, if he thought about it much. You didn't tell him? No, sir. He wouldn't mind. It's just that... Well, I, I think he would. And I don't think it's right for you and me to be acting for his worries. So why don't we just wait for a better time, then we can... But there ain't gonna be a better time. We gotta do it now. Listen, son. Get away from that boy. What do you think you're doing? What business is it of yours, sir? Being on the vigilance committee makes it my business. And my duty. You're that crazy man, ain't you? He ain't crazy. Easy. What? He's my my friend, and and we're just talking, so leave us alone. You need some manner. I'll decide that, Chapin. What's the problem here, gentlemen? Maybe I can help. How you doing there, McGraw? All right. Hello, young man. Sorry, I, I I don't usually uh, snoop, but uh, what can I do for you, Mrs. Baker? Offer me a chair. Oh, I'm sorry. Please sit here. Yes. Well, uh, I think I know why you're here, and if you feel that uh, Billy's being up here is a problem. 
I understand. And you see, your son Billy is already... Mr. McGraw, on my way up here today, uh, perhaps I was both concerned and curious about how my son has been spending his time. But he told me about this fine man who stays close to himself, uh, causes no trouble, and has been kind to him. He's also told me about a man who is a teacher. Aren't you that man? He's a fine boy. I'm Jenny Baker, Mr. McGraw, and I am pleased to meet you. Well, I'm pleased to meet you, Jenny Baker. Now, how about letting me see my son's hawk? I've heard you can make him do anything. Talk, dance, even sing. Well, anything but dance. He has two left feet. He's over <laughs> in the shed. Come over sure. The shed. When are you going to start pulling up, boy? When are you? When? you getting so excited about just because I got me a hawk. I'm being torn to pieces by going up in smoke. Vigilante's trying to force me into joining them. We're cutting off our credit. And a few people would probably like to see me dead. And you running off with some old fool up on a hill messing with a hawk. Dan, please. No, ma'am. This is between me and that boy. He's got to learn responsibility. I'm not going to have him sneaking off across the mountain when we got all these problems here. Now, you listen to me, boy. I don't want you seeing that old man again. Do you understand me? Huh? Yes, sir. I, I ain't never gonna forget this, Pa. Now, wait a minute. Billy and that hawk are the only things in this whole valley worth saving. Don't you see? You and Mr. McGraw train him good. I'm sorry, honey. I was wrong. I was too hard on the boy. I'm sorry. I know. I know you are. I think Billy must be too. I hope so. You know, that old man, he's different. They may go after him next. If they do, where's that going to leave Billy? No worse off than he with us. You heard? There's a vicious rumor around town that you're different.
better than I figured he would, that's for sure. I always knew he was smart. Yeah, you did at that. Yeah, I figure he's about far enough along now that he could have a visitor or two. Uh, what about that friend of yours that likes critters? Uh, Jeremy, is that his name? Yeah. Well, why don't you bring him up here next time you come, huh? Oh, you mean it? He's just been waiting to meet you after all the things I told him about you. Now I wonder what that could have been. Just that you and him are the best, best friends that anyone could have. Well, that goes likewise, sonny. Now, it's getting about time you get home and do your chores. Get going. Okay. Bye, Mr. McGraw. Please, that you could come and visit, young man. Jeremy, is it? Yes, sir. How, how do you do, sir? Oh, just fine, just fine, thank you. What have you been doing? Well, I had a little accident last night, so I've been doing a little repair work. Billy tells me that you like animals the same as he and I do. Yes, sir. Well, I'm sure you'll want to meet Mr. Baker's hawk. I put him out so he could get some sunshine this morning. Well, go on over. He's right over there. Beautiful hawk. See how big he is? He's gonna be ready to hunt pretty soon. Well, now, it's a good thing you come today, Jeremy. The bird's in a good mood, and he's got a couple of new lessons coming today, right, Billy? All right. See, what we try to do is fire the hawk on this line. He gets the exercise that Billy figures he needs, and he gets the idea that he can't fly off and leave us when we let him go. Well, he's never really flown before. I, I don't know if he's ready or not. If he's not ready, he better get ready. What if he can't fly? He can fly. Gosh, Billy, this is going to be exciting. Tell you what, Jeremy, you better stand back there and out of the way because no telling what this fool bird's going to do when we let him go. I'll stand real still so as not to scare him. Well, that'll be real fine. It's nice to work with people who understand animals. Right. Give him a little warning by lowering your arm, and then you toss him. Look at him, look at him. Did you see him? Did you see him? Go get him, we'll do it again. He was so strong, and he could have flown right over that mountain. Yeah, I noticed. Gosh, Billy, he's the most beautiful hawk I ever saw. Well, you want to go get him, Sonny? You figured on letting him sit out there all day. You go get him.
think we'd better let a bird get some rest. He's had quite a workout today. You get up there and get yourself some fresh air. Okay? I'd like you fellows to help me with a little matter. Then we can have some cookies that I made last night, okay? Sounds good to me. I need to take that fawn down the hill and turn her over to her mother. Turn her loose? Yeah, it's time. But you raised that thing. Uh, heck, it's yours. Don't you want her anymore? I want it all right. I'm a jelly heart inside. But it's time this critter was turned loose. <clears throat> it's past time. Well, it's got to be done. You think we should let our friend Jeremy go in there and get her? Go ahead. Hey, Jeremy. Don't let her loose. Be careful. She's fast. She's quick. She's just a baby. I wanted you boys to come along with me. It's kind of hard for me to give her back to mother. Yes, come on. You got to try it on your own, Missy. You sure do. You got to try it on your own. You'd get so tame around here that you wouldn't be no good in the wild. Then you'd be beholden to me the rest of your life. Yeah, yes, you would. Take off the splint there, will you? Wild thing has got to be wild, Missy. Oh, your mama. There she is. Okay, smile, folks. Ooh. Now you keep your hat on if you're going to sit out in this hot sun. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Miss Baker, I'm truly sorry to take your husband and wife from you on a day like this with all the celebrating. Uh, well, volunteers are a bit scarce these times. I do thank you, though. You two better get going or you're going to miss the celebration. Okay, bye, Pa. You have a good time, son. I will. Yeah. Don't eat too much. I guess I'm going myself. I'll be at that county seat tomorrow night, Paul. Over we'll there. I don't expect anything much is going to happen. Usual drunks. Firecrackers scaring the old folks, things like that. I don't think you'll have to do anything except just be here. <laughs> they know you. They know what you stand for. And I am much obliged to you for helping me. It's all right. Okay. Have a nice ride. Well, a hot one anyway. Adios.
people, and largely through our efforts, we will have the peace and quiet we all deserve. shop. The fix-it shop? That's right. Two of them. Bust in the back door, stole most of his tools and eleven dollars cash money. What are you going to do about it? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is go down there and have a look-see. It's already been done. We know who broke into Joe's place. We want to know if uh, you're going to take him or do we have to do it? You said you knew who'd done it. How? They were seen. And yeah, some of the boys saw him carrying a tote bag into the boarding house. Now we're covering the front and back, and we got men on the roof next door. You gonna go after him? Sounds like an ultimatum to me. You can call it anything you want. I'm giving you a chance. God only knows why. If you think we're gonna now, just a minute. Let's get one thing straight. I'm the constituted law around here. I'll go down and talk to him. But all you're gonna do is observe. What are we gonna do? Spend all night here right back talking about it? Crazy. He don't take no stock in crazy. Thinks if I go up there, I'll become a crazy man too. Can't go up no more, Billy. Please tell Mr. McGraw I'm sorry. I will. Just wonder if my pa thinks I'm crazy if I go up there. I don't know. I sure wish your pa changed his mind. If only your pa can meet, Mr. Pa, you'd know why we like him so much. Maybe when things change around here, maybe he'll change his mind. I don't know if things will ever straighten out. Hey, the fireworks are gonna start. Come on, let's go. They were going to blast them right out of the boarding house if they had to. Now come on, and we're going to miss the shoot. Now, their room is the first one off the side steps right up there. I'm going up. We'll go with you. Maybe you didn't understand. Nobody's going up there but me. Now, if I have to throw you in jail, I will. All right, all right.
as soon as I can. I'll pay. No, thank you. Dan, I said I'll pay. At least let me do that much. I'd rather not. I can do that. There's not much else I can do. Dan, please. I started this thing and two men have been killed. It's my fault. Let me help you, Dan. Maybe this will be the end to it. Thanks again for your help, Doc. Jimmy. And if there's anything else I can do, I, I, I'll do it. That's nice to know. We've been training him. When that bird takes to the air, he's free to do as he wishes. If he comes back, I think he will. It'll be because he wants to. Well, I'd say it's a perfect day for flying our friend here. So beautiful, Mr. McGraw. I... Go on, Billy. Go on. Don't be afraid. He's getting kind of far away. Don't, don't you think we should call him back? Yeah, give him a try. <laughs> try it again, son. He can't hear it. made a bargain, son, about that hawk. He's free to do as he pleases, so just let him find his own way.
Come on, let's go. Be dead gun. <laughs> Come on, you old buzzard. So, you finally changed your mind, huh? You know what you did, huh? There's a boy down there, all alone with a broken heart. That's what you did. You ought to be ashamed. Sonny, you got a visitor. He did come back. Yeah. <laughs> I decided to come back to you. I guess he just had a few things he had to do. I think that's exactly right. Well, we'd better let him sit a while and get used to being on the ground again. I'll go get him some meat so we can feed him. Good idea. <laughs> what you gonna do, Billy boy? Run and tell your pa. Some <laughs> deputy. Vigilantes had to come and save his skin for him. Now you listen to me, boys. I've staked this land, and you're trespassing. You talk real big, old man. What are you doing this for? Why don't you just get out of here? <laughs> you know, I don't like you, Billy boy. Don't like him. He ain't hurt you none. Why don't you just leave us alone? Living by himself, acting so high and mighty. Hey, a man don't mess with animals. Keeps his nose to the grindstone. Don't have time for, for playing and, and, and lording over other folks. <laughs> I, I was just thinking about that meat last night. It was so tame. The old man must have been playing with it, too. What are you talking about? Just our supper last night. <laughs> that doe walked right up to us like she wanted a, a handout or something. He's the easiest shot I ever had. You didn't shoot that fawn's mother. I told you he was training the darn thing. <laughs> Man. 
Let me have a look at him. I can help him. I told you. Stay away. Come on. Come on. Let's go into town and get the doc. Get up. I'll get you for this, old man. I'll get you. Come on. Come on. Come on. What does it look like in town? I'd say with all the rumors going around down there, this thing's been opened up for anything, including killing. A few of them hotheads down here are convinced that old man's crazy. He's a menace. I think they're going to try to run him off that mountain, and I think they're going to try to do it tonight. We can't let that happen. And Paul and I will do anything we can to help you. All right, gentlemen, it's going to be the three of us. Things, Mr. McGraw, are they? I mean, he ain't hurt no one. Son, sometimes all you have to do to make people fear you and hate you is be a little different. Be a good boy. Oh, Pop, please let me come with you. You stay here, get a good night's sleep. We got a lot of chores to do in the morning. Dan, it's, it's getting late. We have to leave now. Don't you worry. No, we won't. He's gonna be all right. He really is gonna be.
Where's Mr. Carson? The other side of the rock. Drink some of this. I'm up here inside. gotten out of town before he could stop him. How to be if I cover the other side? Good idea. Right. Okay. I want you to hold it right there. Turn around, go back to town. You got no business on this mountain. Paul, oh, if you got an extra gun, I can... No, Billy. Tell you what you can do. You can get up there and let McGraw know what's happening. Our job is to try to save McGraw's hide if we can. If you want to help, get up there and warn him. You stay there and wait for me. Horace is over there behind the tree. Go on. All right, I want you all to go up the mountain from that side. The rest of us go up the other way. Come on! He ain't going to shoot us. Keep on going. Let me check the old man's cabin. What's wrong? You gotta go. They're, they're gonna get you. They're vigilantes. Take it easy. Take it easy. Tell me, tell me, what's going on? They're coming. They're, you gotta run. You gotta go. You gotta hide. My pa, he's trying to hold them off, but he can't hold them off all day. They're, they're gonna hurt you. The vigilantes, huh? Are you fellas? Turn around go back. Go home to your wives your kids. That's the law. You ain't stopping nothing from doing what needs to be done. Or you're gonna have to shoot your own neighbors, Carson. You're gonna have to kill your own boy. Come on.
Take those things off your faces. Let's see how brave you are in the daylight. Take them off. Dan, Dan, they got past me. They're on their way to McGraw's. <laughs> Get off that horse. Huh? Oh, we, we weren't going to do nothing. I'm ashamed of what I did. But I'm disgusted with the sight of you. You'd make sure that our friends who are left here are taken care of and then set free. Yes, sir. Okay. Are you are you going for good? Yes, I'm going for good. Well, I, I want to thank you for all the help you gave me with the hawk. No, it's all right, son. I I enjoyed that. You're going to have to take care of him yourself now. I can't do that. I, they just shoot him down. I have to shoot him down because what he did to Maury. I don't know. My pie. See, I, I don't know where he is or... He's dead or, or alive or anything. And, and he, he didn't want me to have, have the hot. Listen, I don't, I don't know what to say. Make sure of that. Burn it.
Zeit, ja? Ja, okay. Billy. McGraw, where's McGraw? It's okay, Bobby. He left for good. Up there. That isn't your hawk up there, is it? No, sir. Not now, it ain't. I'm sorry, son. I am too, Bob. If I say anything was bad about you, I'm sorry. We all got our doubts. It's part of life, part of growing up. I love you, Paul. I'm sorry. All right. It's all right, Billy. It's all right. It's all right, boy. Mm -hmm.